All right, let's uh, keep moving. I am sorry, but we'll get to your question, I promise, during the question and answer session. Our next speaker is Denise Bryan from the district. She's the health officer with the District 2 Health Department. Good evening. I'm Denise Bryan. I'm the health officer for District Health Department number two. Thank you for coming out. I know it's time away from your families and I see a lot of business people that also are taking time away from their work. Uh, it's a complex topic and sometimes, sometimes that can be overwhelming and I'm grateful for the experts that are here tonight to share information. On February 26, when I learned of the recommendation to avoid consuming the water, I issued a health advisory to the, the residents drinking those well water that was sampled and tested. And I did that by calling and then knocking on doors. I used our sanitarians who are familiar with your community and people. And they went door to door to provide an opportunity to give the health advisory and start the dialogue and the questions. Tonight, one of the things I'm able to share is individuals affected by the health advisory will be eligible to get a water access voucher. And the township, uh, Ann and Bob, have been very gracious in working with us to provide a local short-term plan for the municipal water because one of the things I learned is our municipal water is very safe and it's high quality water. So we will be working with families. Uh, I will also tell you that Walmart and Rogers are donating five gallon containers so that you can get water in a container and provide your family. And it's unlimited for the people that are undergoing the testing and the PFCs are being detected. But I think it's important to recognize th that there's going to be short-term solutions and in terms of the municipal access, there's a long-term range. And we really need to collectively look at the ident identified problems and that's why I'm thankful you're here to share your concerns and your stories because we're listening. We have a lot of legislators here listening to us as well, and I'm grateful for their time. So we need that collective voice to spur action and take it to the next level. So District Health Department number two employees are local. We are here and we're gonna be available. We updated our website to have a Worksmith activities so you can visit the website and you can get information as well. And we will work with the experts. I keep learning more about the topic. Um, emerging chemical contamination. That is of interest to this community given the history here. So every time I listen to Christina Bush, I'm thankful for her expertise and I learn more. We have the DEQ. So we have some really dedicated people. And one of the things that was shared with me was um, there, that people appreciate the conversation and the information, but they want to know action steps too. So that's a role in sharing communication and advocating for you, and that will be an ongoing commitment of myself as your health officer, the Board of Health Commissioners, and the IOSCO Commissioners. I have spent time to update them, and they are very concerned for this issue as well. So I would like to um, continue the presentation to listen to the next presenters. I will be available afterwards if others want to come up and ask me questions as well. Any questions right now? Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Our next speaker is Chuck Thomas, who is a supervisor with the MDEQ's Office of Drinking Water Municipal Assistance. Uh, good evening. Um, I understand and I heard the question about municipal water. Um, before we get too far along the line here, I think we all recognize that municipal water is the remedy of choice 
for most people. However, that remedy has, does have a high cost associated with it. And you know, the funding right now for that is not there. We need to uh, collectively work towards something like that. And, uh, but in the interim, for people who have impacted wells and you get tired of going and hauling water from someplace and you want to be able to use your water, um, some of the options you have would be to install some treatment devices in your home. And I'm going to try to talk a little bit about that, what would be a viable uh, device, what would work for you. Um, the state of Minnesota did a significant study on what treatment devices work well for removal of PFCs. And the, what was identified was a combination of um, granulate activated carbon with reverse osmosis units. And up here right now is just a picture of a couple of um, reverse osmosis units. And what you're seeing there is a typical under the sink type of unit. Um, the typical reverse osmosis has a what's called a pre-filter, which takes out some of the bigger uh, molecules. And then it has a carbon filter to take out some of the other stuff and then a, a membrane to kind of finish. And it may be in that order or it may be reversed. It may have the membrane and then the carbon filter afterwards for what's called polishing. Um, there's just a couple of examples up there. Here's what they look like underneath your sink. Um, just a small installation. These are not meant to treat all the water in the house. They're only meant to treat the small amount of water that you would use for cooking and drinking because they don't produce tremendous amounts at one time. Um, go ahead. Um, here's a couple of examples of, help, of uh, units that would treat a larger amount of water. More, you know, it might be down in your basement instead of under your sink. And again, it's the same concept. You have um, a pre-filter uh, membrane and a, um, there we go, there. <laughs> and a uh, carbon filter in there. What is the cost? Uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, here's another example of some home units. Okay, four, to answer the question about the cost, because that was my next, my next uh, point here. Um, you can get these small under the sink reverse osmosis units anywhere, you'll see them priced anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to 800 bucks. Um, typically installed costs are around 500. Um, you get them, you, you get uh, installation from a reputable water treatment dealer or from your plumber. Um, <coughs> you know, one thing I caution you on is because you're installing these to remove PFCs to make sure that the carbon filter component is significantly large. There are some, I don't think it's on, you know, go back, if you go back one picture if you would please. One time, yeah. Yeah, okay. This particular unit has a small inline carbon filter. That would, I would not recommend that type of loan. I would recommend if you got something like that, that you made sure that one of these three units also was a carbon filter, because these small inline polishing filters would not remove enough of the PFCs. Question back here. What's the price to hook up the municipal water? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was talking to your uh, uh, regional water authority folks today, and they talked <coughs> to me, they said something in terms of around $100 per foot for water main. So depending on where you're located, I mean, if your house is where water main is already, then you're probably looking at maybe a couple of thousand dollars for the service line and water meter, curb stop. Okay, you know, if, if the water main's already in front of your house. If the water main's not there, you gotta get it there. And so the construction costs with all of everything is around 100 bucks a foot. So you're saying around 2,000 half in feet if it's set in front of your well, I wouldn't call it tapping fee. I'd call that the cost to install a service line, curb stop, and a meter. I don't know if your utility has a separate tapping fee or not. That would, you know, I can't answer that question. But just in terms of typical construction costs, that'd be about what it is. Go ahead. Um, keep going. 
Another way to, um, is another thing for a whole house would just be granulated activated carbon. And if you did go that route to treat all of your water, you want to make sure you have a redundancy in there because these things need to be changed out. That with the granulated activated carbon, it, it absorbs the contaminant and it comes to a point where it is reached its absorbent capacity and you have to change the filter out. So you want to make sure you have two so you can bypass during the change out. Yes? The uh, granulated activated carbon plus reverse osmosis as, uh, in the state of Minnesota studies showed that it's pretty much 100% removal, you know, basically to non-detect. You know, we can't really say 100% because we don't know, we just know it's non-detect. Uh, the, 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 the thing about it only is, is that we don't recommend that you rely on treatment devices for your own personal public safety in the long term because these things have to be properly maintained. They don't last forever. They have a, sh they have a shelf, they have a, a use life. And they, have to, they have to be maintained. And what the point is with the granular activated carbon is when it becomes full, you don't know it's full. And then when it comes full, it will actually start releasing more contaminants than what it's taking out. So you have to be careful. Okay. And then this is just a picture of what they look like in reality. I don't have any more pictures but I can certainly try to answer some questions about water and water treatment. Yes, sir. Is this a softener with a media tank that works with same as after? No, it does not. A softener will not remove these contaminants. No, it will not remove these contaminants. You have to have the charcoal. Or, and the reverse osmosis membrane actually just keeps things from passing through. I saw a hand going up in the back. No? Anything else? All right, well, thank you for your time.